day two we uh, had some breakfast this morning right beside our airbnb that was nice mm -hmm. we then hopped on a bus took about two buses maybe about 45 minutes we're in north vancouver now and we just made it to the cleveland dam so we think there's some really good mountain views here we'll get some some water as well and then once we're done here we're going to take another bus i think it's pretty short maybe like a five or ten minute bus ride to grouse mountain so we're gonna get in all our mountain views today mm -hmm. and in fact we already know there's some really good views here because the views are right on the other side of the camera a little foggy but uh we're gonna show you what that looks like and nick and sabrina are just hanging out off the side messing around with the selfie stick <laughs> and uh and trying to make us laugh while we record this and there Nick is. Sabrina, not dancing anymore. So a little foggy, but very nice. And right in front of us will be the lake and uh, the Cleveland Dam, I think, is up on the left. I could probably afford that island. Island living. Just trying to get some nice footage of the lake. And here Nick is talking about housing prices and how we can only afford a tiny little island out there. He's not wrong. Gas to get there on the boat. <laughs> That's right. Now the gas prices are terrible. We aren't going to be able to afford to get out there. Just to give you a better idea of where we are, this is the Capilano River area just north of Vancouver. Downtown is right there. This supplies a bunch of the drinking water for Vancouver. All right, so the view from the Cleveland Dam, super nice. There's a ton of nature and trails around here. If you're ever in this area, definitely come by. Uh, maybe you'll get a sunnier day than we've gotten because as you can tell, a little foggy and cloudy up there. Next up, we're actually gonna go to Grouse Mountain and maybe it will be less foggy by the time we get there. Maybe we'll get some views from the top of the mountain. I think we're gonna walk up it and take the cable car down, uh, but we also don't really know what we're getting into. So when we get there, we will probably have a better sense of what we're gonna do. So we're at Grouse Mountain. I'm aware that before I said we were gonna walk up the mountain, I should have used the term hike. And uh, as we look around and we see people with calves the size of tree stumps, I think it's making us question our decision whether or not we're gonna hike up. Uh, what do you guys think? What are we gonna do? I don't know. I'm not scared. I'm a little scared. <laughs> scared, okay. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we're gonna scope things out a little bit. Oh, there's Natasha, she made it. How do you feel about the hike at this point? I feel like fine about it right now, like a little optimistic. But are you seeing these people with legs the size of tree trunks? <laughs> seeing like people like very well dressed right yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm like, oh, hmm, hmm. So, I don't know. All right, we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> We've decided we want legs like tree trunks, so we're hiking up and then when we get up there There's like a lumberjack show and grizzly bears and other things. What else? I know we can go to the highest point. On the yeah, highest point on of the a mountain. gondola yeah. Wish It's us gonna luck. be good. Should I'm be really fun here for the tree, trunk, uh, <laughs> tree trunk tree trunk legs. Let's go <laughs> How you doing? I'm already tired <laughs> But it's okay. <laughs> We've been walking for like three minutes. Maybe not even. Sabrina pointed out this must be the T-Rex holding pen. A sec.
candle. Holy shit. I think I just got the mosquito bite on my forehead. That's not gonna be good. Oh, you're just getting me. Put a shop on it. So we were wrong. We cannot walk up a mountain right now in the no. shape that we're We are in. not those kind of people. The girl who sold us our tickets told us that the first quarter of the way up was the hardest out of all of it. And then we got a quarter of the way up and it said, you've done the easiest part. It only gets harder and steeper from here. We were lied to and, in British Columbia. And I was like, can't do it. There's no. no way I could do this three more times. So we climbed back down the mountain bought additional tickets so we can take the gondola up and we're about to get on it right now. Yeah, literally it's right behind us. We're gonna board that and uh, then when we get up top we'll go do all the fun stuff we we're gonna do if we had climbed the whole way. So Nick and Sabrina actually did do the climb. We just got to the top of the mountain and look who made it right then and there. Right about the same time as me. There it is. There he is. They were not prepared for this either. Uh, there's uh, snow up here, which I don't think we, we did no research. We should have done more research. So uh, Natasha's taken my sweater. I have a rain jacket. Hopefully we'll be warm enough. So Nick finished the climb and he's a uh, little sweaty to show for it. <laughs> Have proof. Yeah, he's proof that he did it. <laughs> now he's just got not freeze to death. It's a nice sweater you got there. You're nice and warm. Yes, <laughs> yes I hope. It's cold up here. There's still snow. Um, so there's a lookout up here, but I don't know if we're going to see anything today. We will see if the fog clears. We got about an hour and 15 minutes. We're gonna look around. There's a gondola up to the highest point on the mountain and we're gonna grab some food. And then at two o'clock, there's a lumberjack show and I've only ever watched that on OLN or TSN, the sports channel in Canada. So hopefully we can go see that live. So I was just standing up here getting a time lapse of some of the fog rolling in. And then these guys down here uh, started asking people, to move and walk around a different direction because there's a bear just here in the forest and uh, I guess they're concerned it's gonna come up on some of the people at this viewing platform here. So uh, keep an eye on this and see what happens. So we're up here in the chalet just grabbing some food, waiting to try and get some of this footage because the fog just keeps rolling in and rolling out. Patience is important here. Just five minutes ago, you couldn't see any of this. Nice snack. Save it in your backpack for later. <laughs> Alright, everyone's talking about cookies, but we're almost at the Lumberjack show. Uh, we weren't prepared for the fact that it's a straight up winter up here. So that's on, on us. Uh, we're Canadian, but uh, we're not normally this high. Toronto is not uh, a very high city. Sabrina wants Lumberjacks. Nick could compete. Look at that beard. <laughs> Good afternoon, folks. My name is Lindsay Warnock. I'm going to be your MC for the day. On behalf of Timberland Productions, I'd like to welcome you all here to the world famous Grouse Mountain Lumberjack Show. Four points. Oh, that was amazing. What? 
Oh, yeah, he cheated. How, how did he cheat? He did. Well, how? He fell down the tree. Okay. All right, uh, Johnny, do you want a rematch? Yeah. No, that's okay. <laughs> so. Let's have one more big dance. As is Canadian tradition, beaver tails up on the hill. They have a grizzly up at the top of the mountain, which is a very, very popular attraction. Look at those claws. Those are some big bears in that enclosure. <laughs> no, you're being eaten. <laughs> Your coffee's in the way. I can't see anything. <laughs> I'm losing it. But it's ridiculous. It's right? wild. You guys, let's see it. We're going to the top of the mountain. Everybody yeah. wave yeah. at our neighbors. <laughs> Bye, neighbors. <laughs> I, I'm game. You could try. Yeah. <laughs> you should be able to do it. And that's when I'm like, oh, look who could fit under here. All right, just step off on the red line. Thank, Thank you. you. I see ya. <laughs> Everybody made it. Run, 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 run. <laughs> All right, here's what we came up here for. If this cloud gets out of the way. We have an amazing view. Very nice. And then we move and everybody move with the camera. Move with the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fall <laughs> to my cat. <laughs> <laughs> Sabrina's screaming for the zipline people. They didn't do it. Come on, where's the hype? <laughs> Up here starting a snowball war. <laughs> oh, we got a good. Tasha, yeah? worth the ride up. Oh, way worth the ride up. This is awesome. Because look at this. So we haven't had snow at home in months. And we come to uh, Vancouver and up to the top of the mountain. And just for reference, I'm five feet tall. And this snow is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Catch up to him. After all that hiking, it's amazing you can still run. A <laughs> uh, quarter of the hike. That's right, one quarter. What's the best part of the gondola ride down? The warm seat. The warm seat. That's right. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, but we're missing the bird show down there. This was going on right down there where all those people are. If I'm pointing at the right area. mountain and we took the free shuttle which is amazing and it dropped us right off at Canada Place so we are at Canada Place here I think it's you can see it on both sides of me with a beautiful view again mountains and skyline in the background and we're just gonna check it out here see what there is to do I think walk around a bit maybe get a, a treat before dinner and uh, it's nice and sunny down here so a little warmer than it was on the mountain so before we go and look around, you get to hear some Canada Place history from me because I'm a nerd and I heard some really interesting things about this place and I wanted to share that with all of you. So Canada Place, the land that this is on, on the north end of downtown Vancouver, used to be just a Canada Rail rail yard and it was in not great shape. And in the late 70s, they decided to host a, a big expo here for the 100th anniversary of Vancouver. It ended up being called Expo 86 and all this Canada Place land was built. Specifically, this building behind me here, I think this is the Canada Place Convention Center. One of the things that I really wish was still here that we could have seen during Expo 86, of the many different things built for that exposition, 22 million people visited, so it was a really big, uh, extraordinary event, but McDonald's built a 187-foot barge that they anchored here off the shore and it was a mobile McDonald's. And I don't remember exactly how long it ran for, but it's an enormous barge. 
That barge still exists, but it is totally abandoned. And it's I, 60 kilometers or 60 miles up the Fraser River, far enough away that we can't go look at it. Not that you can go inside or anything like that, but it's this abandoned barge that's just anchored there. There's a really good YouTuber by the name of Bright Sun Films. He's a Canadian guy from Burlington and he makes these mini documentaries about abandoned places. He has made two different videos about Mick Barge as it is lovingly called, which are so good and I highly recommend you look, you watch these videos. I will link them in the description of this video because I want you to experience the same joy that I did when I first heard about Mick Barge. And uh, we, are, we are at the place where it was anchored. Maybe it was anchored right there. We don't actually know. So anyway, we're gonna go take a look around and uh, hopefully get to see what this place is like. These people are just following me. They don't know where they're going. Look at Sabrina. She doesn't have a clue. Apparently this is a great spot for prom photo shoots. So sparkly. I'm kind of blown away here. This is a Chevron gas station. Just in the middle of the harbor. What I assume is a Chevron gas station for boats. I've never seen a floating gas station before. No. Well, yeah, also something very different here. They have tons of float planes that just take off from this harbor, head over to Victoria Island and other parts of the BC interior. Canada Place is also home to the Port of Vancouver, so big cruise ships like this come in for a day or possibly more. It was parked to our right just a few minutes ago. And actually, if I pan to the right, Vancouver, of course, is a massive shipping and receiving center for all of Canada. Pretty much everything that comes into Canada from the west coast comes through this port right here. Obviously, one big container ship in the port. And you can't see it from here, but when we were up on Grouse Mountain, over on the other side of Stanley Park on the left here, there's a bunch of container ships that are just parked in the harbor as they wait for their time to port. There's a bit of a different view of the Vancouver skyline that we have not really seen yet. You remember yesterday when Nick was talking about the cobra chickens? Yeah, well, I guess they have to warn all the tourists about them when they're not familiar. What a wonderful sunny day this has turned into after the cold of up on the mountain. Looks like we're going to head back to our Airbnb for now. Uh, so people want to shower, get ready for dinner. And then there's some talk about sushi, but not quite sure yet what we're going to do. Found our dinner. Okay, so we're winding down for the day. We got back from, where was the last place they saw Canada us? Place. Canada Place. We got back from the Canada Place like pier down there, port I guess it's called, and uh, went back to our Airbnb, freshened up, you know, the whole thing. And then we walked like a hundred meters from our Airbnb and got what's supposed to be the best Donair in town. Mm -hmm. uh, we're at a park, we're gonna eat it, relax, maybe catch a sunset, grab a couple patio drinks, and uh, yeah, enjoy our cheap eats for the night. Mm -hmm. We lost Nick, he had to go buy water, but Sabrina's starting without him. She I doesn't care. <laughs> He's the reason. That's right, with her falafel meal. Bye, Sabs. <laughs>